In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My dear canons, my dear abbeys, my dear sisters, dear faithful, Canon Sylvie, after seven years, I can attest you have not grown any taller. (laughs) Indeed, we may say that in a way, certain prophetic words were pronounced seven years ago and have now been fulfilled. At that time, when you were a little candidate here, I recall well a certain precocious young girl here at St. Mary's who approached you menacingly, stared far up at your distant face and declared, I'm going to shrink you. (laughs) I don't know if this threat filled you with terror, and I have no idea how she hoped to make good on it. Nevertheless, it has come to pass. My dear Kenan, you have shrunk. To be sure, for those of us who hold the true faith, you have grown immeasurably great. Since the first of this month, when you knelt upon the church floor in Florence and the ordaining bishop laid his hands upon you and pronounced the words of consecration, there is a fundamental difference between you and those who are in the pews today. Some of them may be stronger than you, faster, more athletic, more intelligent. A very few may be taller. Some of them may be even further advanced in the way of personal holiness. But ever since July 1st, we all know by divine faith that there are things you can do which they cannot do. Hear the sins of others and impart God's forgiveness through the sacred words of absolution. Heal both body and soul in the sacrament of extreme unction. Consecrate the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Canon Sylvie, you are unquestionably a giant among men. Yet we know that none of these awesome powers guarantee that your own soul will be brought even one step closer to heaven. What a priest is ordained to do, he is ordained to do for others. He cannot absolve his own sins. He must wait his turn in line like everyone else. If he falls gravely ill, he must send for another priest to anoint him. It is true he does receive Holy Communion from his own hands, but never outside of Mass. He does it only in the course of the celebration of Mass, and not as a privilege, but as an obligation, in order to complete the sacrifice. As you look out at these people, know that you are a Catholic with them, and a priest for them. As a priest, you bring salvation to others. As a Catholic, you must still work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. When you ascend the altar, you put on the sacred vestments so that the mere mortal Brian Sylvie can no longer be seen. You then look just like any other priest. Nay, you look like one other, the only, our High Priest Jesus Christ. In your priestly office, which we witness today on solemn display, you take upon yourself the the sins of the entire world. Christ is made great in you. You are made very small indeed. St. Paul teaches us every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men, and the things that appertain to God that he may offer up gifts and sacrifices for sins, who can have compassion on them that are ignorant and that err, because he himself also is compassed with infirmity, 
And therefore he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. Canon, small and weak though you are, we know the church is nevertheless mindful of who you are, as she is of all those whom she calls to this highest dignity on earth. As you heard from the bishop at the beginning of the ordination ceremony, it pertains to the priest to sacrifice, to bless, to preside, to preach, and to baptize. It is with the utmost fear that one should ascend to such a high degree, mindful that those chosen for this office should distinguish themselves by a heavenly wisdom, pure morals, and a long practice of justice. Moments later, you lay prostrate on the church floor as all those present implored the intercession of the whole court of heaven and the litany of the saints. For all of heaven is watching, praying, whenever any small, frail man is about to be ordained to the eternal high priesthood of Jesus Christ. Who can possibly declare before ordination that he has attained all the sanctity necessary to be ordained a priest. No one. His only path to the altar is that of acknowledging his own nothingness, the path of humility. Jesus, I am nothing, and without thee I can do nothing. But if it be for thy greater glory, become great in me. Ken and Sylvie, I counsel you to be sparing in your use of the word I in your sermons. The faithful priest does not look at the rapid degeneration of this wicked world, the corruption of morals, the spread of heresy, the apostasy of churchmen, and protest, I can't change. I'm not bending. He knows it's not about him. Rather, he looks to the Holy Scriptures, the teachings of the Fathers, the declarations of the dogmatic councils, the expression of all these truths in the Church's ancient and venerable liturgies, and thunders with conviction, it can't change. Christ is the same yesterday and today, and Christ and his Church are one. Christ and his liturgy are one. There is no other price for our redemption than the most precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That adorable blood was offered 2,000 years ago on the cross. From that moment until the end of this last age of the world, in every nation it will be offered on the church's altars in the sacred liturgy, those hallowed words and actions handed down from our first fathers which speak more eloquently than the blood of Abel. None of us on the world scene today, from little girl in the pew to priest at the altar to the highest prelate, can save the church from peril because we don't save the church. The church saves us. Ken and I conclude with words which I hope you have heard before, perhaps many present have never heard. The beautiful description of the priesthood given us by a holy priest from two centuries ago, the Dominican Lacordaire. To live in the midst of the world with no desire for its pleasures, to be a member of every family yet belonging to none, to share all sufferings to penetrate all secrets, to heal all wounds, to go daily from men to God to offer him their homage and petitions, to return from God to men, to bring them his pardon and hope, to have a heart of fire for charity and a heart of bronze for chastity, to bless and to be blessed forever. Good God, what a life, and it is yours. O priest of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.